Hi everyone, it's Don Bauer here. I'm here to give you another video on flash photography. Uh, I don't know if I'll really be telling you anything new, but I thought I'd just go over some of the things which I've said in the past. Because I still keep getting quite a lot of questions about flash and how it works and how it's affected. So this video is all about indoor flash photography. There's different types of lighting scenarios you can have. One of them is outdoor lighting, where you've got to deal with the sunlight, which is very, very powerful. The other one is indoor lighting, which is like this, where you're just using normal lights. And uh, when it's a sunny day as well, and the sun's coming through there, then the amount of light which is in the room, whenever you're taking a photo, is the ambient light. If you want to lower the ambient light, then close the doors, close the curtain, turn off your lights in the room. And then the final type of light is the flash light, which is an instantaneous light straight away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of portraits where you don't even need a light stand. I'm going to have an umbrella, which you can get for, I think it's like £24 from Calumet Photo. Go on their website to find out some of the details. And I'm just going to be holding a flash, my SB800, and I've got it on remote mode. I've got my camera preset up with the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeters. I've got it at 28 and I've got it at f5.6. I've uh, pre-focused it, so it should be focused on me uh, every time I jump into place. And I'm going to show you how moving this and changing the settings on the camera affects the picture. So at the moment, I've got the camera on a manual setting. So I've got it at 60th of a second and f5.8, ISO around about 200. And if we were to take a photo with no flash, this is what it looked like. And as you can see, it's really dark. It's pretty much black. If we wanted to make a brighter image, then we would increase the ISO, or we would make the aperture F number a smaller number, say 2.8, um, and decrease the speed. So, for example, let's bring it down to F2.8, and let's keep everything else the same. Let's see the difference. Okay, there you're starting to actually be able to see me holding the camera, So, but I'm still really, really dark. If I were to make it a really slow shutter speed, let's say a fifteenth of a second, what you'll start to get is motion blur. And as you can see in that picture, I'm a little bit blurry. And also the only lighting effect that you have is from the light above and the light behind, which really isn't very complimentary at the moment because just now, light right above comes and gives me big shadows underneath my eyes. And the further forward I go, the worse it looks back. So if I'm like this, that's better because that's the light coming straight down and hitting me. If I go like that, I look a little bit dark and horrible. So what we can do is we can control the light by using flash. For that, we're going to stick the little flash on the camera up. I'm just going to hold this. I've got it all on TTL, which means through the lens. But I've also got the camera flash, so it's on uh, commander mode. So that is not affecting the image. So for example, if I hide this and take a photo, Okay, so that, that's not that great because I'm still blurry. So what we want to do is let's increase the speed to, let's say, we'll put, take up to uh, 90th of a second and bring it so it's nice and sharp at f5.6. And when, it's, when the flash is in TTL, what it does is the camera, or certainly the Nikon camera pop-up flash, sends out a bunch of flashes out, like, super quick. And that makes this flash. This the light that reflects off me goes back into the camera and the camera goes, right, okay, we want to increase the flash a little bit. And then another flash comes out and it fires this one off at the correct exposure. And it does it all this quickly. Watch. And it does it like this. That was it, that was it. That was every single bit there. And that's it kind of made the right thing. The other thing is when you're doing portraits, you usually want to change the exposure evaluation on the back. And on the back here, we want to change this so it's on spot or maybe the other one, one at the top, which is kind of a bit in the middle. If you're having it in the middle, that's more for landscape. Okay, so this time let's take another photo of that, but with me holding the flash a little bit further away. In fact, what I'll do is I'll also um, put this so it's at its widest. So putting that down makes it a little bit wider. Let's see how this looks. Okay, and there you can see it is made of an alright image. Now, 
if you also, if I were to put this in a place where it's not, the light isn't going to be reflecting off me, what will happen is the camera will send out the signals for this to fire really, really powerfully. Now, whenever this fires at its maximum power, it makes kind of a warning sound saying, oh, sorry, I wasn't quite powerful enough for that image. So what I'll do, if I hide this in my armpit, like that, then it will have to go off its strongest blast. So let's give that a quick try. See, that's it saying, bang, I've gone off as hard as I possibly can. And as you can see from the image, it's totally dark. But you can actually see a little bit of light coming and hitting the camera because uh, it's coming out of my armpit. Another cool thing is if I put it in my mouth, what happens here? But I do get this really scary look inside, like my mouth is exploding, which is quite interesting. Anyway, I don't really advise that too much. Now, if you want to make it more interesting, uh, or a more of a pleasing light, that's when we start to use an umbrella. I haven't got my light stands anywhere, so I'm just going to use it with my hand. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the flash and the umbrella together in one hand, just kind of like that, and take a photo. Okay, and as you can see, it's giving me a bit of a more flattering light. This time we'll do it with the flash a little bit higher up. That's looking like a, quite a nice look that you're getting to the image. And this time if I have it below me, which probably won't look that good. Ugh, that looks really bad. Really bad. Not a big fan of that one. Uh, so I'd advise never doing that unless you're really attractive. Or you want an evil look. That'd be good for Halloween actually. Maybe if you did like really badass makeup and uh, then did a shot like that with like blood coming down your face. Could look pretty cool. But usually the shots that you want are from the side or above. Directly above, not so cool. I'll show you again. There, as you can see, big bright shiny light on the top of my head and just shadows over the face. So what you really want is light to be coming and hitting your face and filling up all the bits of your eyes and underneath your chin and all that kind of stuff. It's also called a modelling light because it gives a bit of shadows. If you had an umbrella there and an umbrella there, then you get light from both sides and you get no shadows whatsoever. Which is great if you're doing really strong beauty shots. You've really got to work with a lot of makeup because it really doesn't show the dimensions of the face very well. Um, so that's why usually using one umbrella is actually good enough. Usually a second flash would be used for a highlight of the hair. So, there you go. I hope that's giving you a little bit more of an idea of how to do stuff. Cheers.